You're listening to Talk with Renee Dallow, episode number 99. Talk about the ABCs of luxury sales with Michelle Demari. Michelle Demari is the founder of Miss Diamond Ring, an international luxury design consultancy based on the West Coast. Michelle's passion for artistically capturing every couple's unique love story through her bespoke love legacy rings has established her as the new standard in ring shopping in the diamond industry, redefining the engagement ring process for couples. Michelle is a leading female entrepreneur in the self-love movement with her intention diamonds for women, by women, and in support of women from the Diamonds with Soul collection. She has been published worldwide and in 2019, the New York Times took an interest in her unique business of curating six-figure rings for couples around the world through her virtual diamond atelier service. From Hong Kong to New York to Los Angeles, Michelle sources the best diamond and gemstone options within the client's budget. Clients work one-on-one -on -one with Michelle and procure a ring as breathtaking as their love story. And if you want to talk about luxury sales, Michelle is your girl. And I know we love talking about luxury here, but we often don't talk about it in relationship to jewels. I'm so excited to bring you this episode. Go grab your champagne, grab your favorite bougie drink, and let's talk it out. Welcome to Talk with Renee Dallow, biz chat for wedding pros and creatives. Tune in every week for no BS real talk from industry experts that want to help you thrive in your business and your life. Here's your host, event planner, educator, and sushi addict, Renee Dallow. Grab a glass and get ready to talk it out. Hey friends, we're back. I mean, not the podcast. Obviously, we've never gone away. I'm talking about weddings. At least here in Los Angeles, I can tell you we are all experiencing the whiplash and the crush of client expectations, in-person meetings, and like, well, all the things, big and small, that we do for our businesses every day. One of the best things I ever did for my own business was to outsource as soon as I was able. So now that bookings are back, you might also be feeling the pull to outsource. And so I want to remind you about our good friends at Bench. Bench is not just bookkeeping anymore, but they are now an all-in-one tax and bookkeeping solution at prices that honestly can't be beat. With Bench, you get one-on-one -on -one expert support from a real human, you get powerful financial reporting, and stress-free tax filing, as well as historical bookkeeping for clients who might need to get caught up fast. Also, when you work with Bench, you can partner with Lending Club for your business bank account. No monthly fees, no minimum balance, you guys, just total control over your small business finances. And since we're all heading back to work, now's the time to get your payroll in order. And Bench has an awesome partnership with Gusto. I use all of these things in my business every day. And because you are a listener of this show, you can get 30% off your first three months. Just go to reneedallow.com forward slash bench. That's reneedallow.com forward slash bench. Let's get back to work and let's get to outsourcing, baby. Now on with the show. Hello, hello, friends. And thank you for joining me for another episode of Talk with Renee Dallow. Guess what? It's me, Renee Dallow, every week. But this week, I am joined by the very lovely Michelle Demare. Michelle, how are you? I am so fabulous. How are you, Renee? You know, I'm good. Before we started recording, I told Michelle, and I'll tell you, dear listeners, I'm literally sitting in a hotel in Nebraska as we record this, staring at a cornfield. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. That is so it's like, great. It's just one of those days You're where as entrepreneurs the when we talk... Well, right. It's like when we talk about like, we could do our jobs anywhere. Like sometimes I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a true story. <laughs> I love it. How, too bad it's not from St. Bart's, but you know, it's Nebraska this week, which I is know. fine. <laughs> You're bringing one, the bougie from one day. <laughs> one, one day, one day. Well, Michelle, I'm so happy to have you on the show because, you know, my audience is primarily wedding pros and creatives, but the topic of luxury is one that we talk about a fair amount because it seems to be such a 
an aspirational thing for many wedding pros to work in a luxury market, to deal with luxury clients. And I know in your line of work, you absolutely deal with luxury clients, correct? Yep. That is my niche, very specifically like high end, high net worth uh, luxury buyers. Okay. So since you work with primarily luxury clients, do you think that the sales process is particularly different for a luxury client? You know, uh, Yes and no. I would say, so having been in luxury sales for, gosh, 20 plus years, and I've sold literally hundreds of millions in real estate, luxury cars, and, you know, fine high jewelry. Um, what I've realized is that at the end of the day, everybody is after the same thing, which is, you know, we've, we've learned the ABC, always be closing, always be closing. And as a salesperson, I kind of, that's what I did. I was trying to make sales but at the end of the day, it's really about connecting. Mm. People are trying to connect to an experience and a feeling. And now that's everyone, right? Whether it's luxury sales or just regular sales. But in luxury sales, you have to create something that they can't get anywhere else. So a level of exclusive um, ex exclusive experiences and, and exclusive high-touch connection is really what will you know set you apart as a brand, as a company, as a product. Right. That's definitely what I found. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I know from my luxury clients, they they care far more about the entire process. Like they're not willing to have like especially for plant like for wedding planning, right? Like they don't want to have the bumps in the road that are f fairly common for planning. Like they just want the whole experience to be to be like easy in a way that probably our premium clients or our standard budget clients, like they kind of expect that there will be struggle with our luxury clients. It's like, they kind of want you to like pave a smooth road for them in a way. Absolutely. And that's really because time is their most valuable asset. So they're willing to pay more and spend more to not, you know, um, to not spend their time worrying about little details, right? And I, I've noticed that, you know, when I sold $20,000 rings to clients, it was a very different experience from clients who are buying two hundred thousand or five hundred thousand dollar rings, they simply want you know an easy, seamless experience that is high touch. You know they want to be able to reach you when they want to reach you. They don't want to be bogged down with details, and they want to trust that you have everything handled. So it's you know, and that you care. You know, being in the luxury industry, it doesn't mean you have to be snooty. That you have to be you know a certain way. You really just be your authentic self and connect with people like truly, authentically, genuinely and give them your best. Give them what they can't get anywhere else. And to me, that's connection and not even perfection, but like a very seamless uh, experience. Yeah, that's interesting to me because I don't disagree with you. I, I agree with you a lot, but it's one of the things I tell people a lot, especially aspiring wedding planners who want to get into luxury is from my experience with my luxury clients, they want to, um, you don't have to be snooty, of course, that's not, that's never the way. But they do, in my experience, want to have like a common language with you. Like they don't want to have to explain like their, their high end things to you. Oh, yeah. No, you have to. Yeah, when I yeah, absolutely. Like completely, you have to understand what they're looking for and deliver it Right, <laughs> because they do expect perfection. And trust me, I know I'm I'm on the beginning end. You're on That's kind right. of like the end end, right? Like I, I get yeah. them their perfect thing, and yeah, they're the people who come to me know that I've worked at Harry Winston and Tiffany's and Van Cleef, and they know that I have a perfectionist yeah. eye, and I know what they want. I know what they want before they even like go into detail. So them knowing that I know what they want and I can deliver it to perfection it gives them peace of mind that they're not going to have buyer's remorse, that they're not going to have a bad experience and just reducing that stress up front through them knowing me as a brand, as, you know, a perfectionist with detail and craftsmanship. It's just, they have more confidence and they yeah. want to work. How with much me. of that, Michelle, do you think is who you so, are yeah. or how much of that is something you learned? Oh gosh. Well, ironically, I'm not a perfectionist <laughs> by nature. I'm very much like a creative. I am such a like rainbow child. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, it it really uh, it happened through working with these you know incredibly powerful jewelry houses that had you know unparalleled craftsmanship. And I trained in Paris, and I I learned the intricacies of you know every detail you need to know to create something exquisite in diamond jewelry and blue diamonds, pink diamonds. And so just having that knowledge, I'm already like 
I already only have that right. taste now. Anything I see that's below that is it yeah. won't work. It won't work for me or my clients. Um, pity the man, you know, who <laughs> I marry because <laughs> I'm like, I know what I want. But it's it's like for someone looking for a ring, spending, you know, 50000 or more, I'm exactly who yeah. they want to work with. Now, in terms of my business, I have become more of a perfectionist because you miss one little detail. And what happens is when you make one mistake, they will look for five more mistakes, a, mm -hmm. a luxury client, you know, it's like, oh, well, then wait, then they'll, they'll find more mistakes. So you don't want to make one mistake in the beginning, middle or end. And if you do, you own up and you just, you like always do the right thing. Um, but yeah, I, I've become a perfectionist specifically in this, this particular yeah. craft, which it's good because I'm, because I'm kind of a rainbow child. Like I bring a lot of soul and like just genuine, like I, you know, genuinely me-ness of my business. But then when it comes to the ring, like I put on my perfectionist hat and it's, and it's all. Yeah. It's so it's funny time. you say it that way because I also feel like, so my background is, you know, theater and also really fine dining. So the fine dining part of me never shuts off. So like when we're oh, doing yeah. tastings and oh, I yeah. know that this wine is not paired correctly, or I know the fork is, isn't in the right place. Like I'm going to fix it before my clients see it or taste it hopefully. But even if, even if it does happen, like they know that I'm, my eye is on it. Right. And so that's one of the things when I think people think about working with luxury. And when I say things like in order to work with luxury, you have to understand luxury. Like you have to, you have to know the difference between the diamonds, Michelle. I have to know the difference between the wines. Like you have to educate yourself on the, on those finer things. Yes, absolutely. You have to think for them so they don't have to. And they have to know that you will make better decisions than they would themselves. You're going to catch the mistake before they do. And you're going to fix it before, you know, they yeah. even see it. That is part of, yeah, you, you really do have to be an expert and an authority and show it through proof, you know, like show it through social proof and through your actions. So, um, yeah. And, and the best way to do that is happy absolutely. clients, you know, like I think about my business when, when I started my business seven years ago, I had one client. <laughs> that was it. I started with one and that one happy client turned into three, turned into 10, turned into 30, turned into, you know, it's like it compounds on yeah. itself and then you build, that's how you build your reputation. And it's the power of one happy client turns into, you know, in my case, like a global business. So it's, it works, it's important. And if you ever screw up and you will, as a business owner, everyone screws up every now and again, you own it, you do the right thing. You, you know, you make Absolutely. it right. Would you say like your business is mostly referral then? I would say half of it's referral at this point. And I've, I've cast a wide net on, on being out yeah. there. So I used to be solely on Instagram. And then when they changed their algorithm, yeah. gosh, it was yeah. like two years ago, all of my leads completely stopped coming oh. in. And I was like, what the fuck yeah. happened? <laughs> I was thanks, like, Instagram. oh my God. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> still not, they're still not my BFFs because um, they're just, you just cannot figure that one out. It's like a moving target. But um, what it forced me to do, which has now been incredible for my business, is get on Pinterest, get on YouTube, um, you know, work on Facebook ads, work on SEO, which has gotten me to page one of Google. It's got, I mean, it's like, it's, it has been such a game changer to cast a wide net and not rely on one platform. Now it's a pain in the butt up front, but once you get the system down, it's just, it self operates. And when you hire good people to just kind of like manage it and you just kind of flow and you repurpose the content. So what I go, what I create for Instagram, it goes on Pinterest and it goes on YouTube and I just have people who upload it. So it makes it very easy and streamlined. So I'm everywhere. And that helps with SEO. Yeah. And SEO is like someone who goes to Google and searches for a five carat or 10 carat. There boom, you, there you are. I'm right there. So, but referral business, I will say yeah. is gold because someone who comes in through the internet, there are a few more hoops you have to jump through and there's not the level of loyalty than you get through a direct referral. Yes. That is I gold. love that you talk about, you know, advertising to the luxury market because in, in some circles people have said like, oh, you know, you can't really advertise to them. Like it's all word of mouth. And I think that that can be true depending on the circles, but because I, especially for you, Michelle, I feel like, you know, if we're going to talk statistics, I'm sure you're dealing more with the grooms at the beginning of, of this process, right? Yes, I am. And I'm not, it's, I'd say like 50% of the clients are, are men and then 50% are a split of women looking for their ring with their, you know, fiance's yeah. approval and couples That's looking nice. together. 
but um yeah so i've i've had to work on targeting both the male and the female demographic in the luxury niche which took some time to figure out i mean truly because i didn't have a huge budget for advertising also you know agencies you got to pay them 15 right. grand a month and i was like no i, I can't do it i won't do it i'm going to find a really good freelancer who's who can get shit done mm -hmm. and i did and you know it's been I incredible um so it's really about finding a few yeah, finding a few good people. And I will say you can advertise to the luxury demographic. Um, people said I couldn't and I did it. <laughs> you know, like I get leads who come to my website and they, they'll, you know, spending 50000 or more on their ring. And it's done through Facebook ads. So Love it that. works. So we should all go follow your Facebook and your Pinterest so we can see how you're doing because you... We already know Instagram isn't your BFF anymore. Well, 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 actually, I shouldn't have said that. Instagram is it's actually my biggest oh. presence. But what I mean by that is like, it's hard to yeah, grow on is. there. But I'm totally like, actually, Instagram is my okay, biggest so we'll, presence. Facebook, I'm not as present on, but, but we do advertisements through Facebook. Well, because Instagram, they're now they're in bed so together. So, of course, <laughs> um, I, wanna, I want you to talk to us a little bit totally. about about how you started saying no more and that led to more revenue because that is a lesson that every business owner I think needs to hear. Oh boy, totally. Such a game changer for me. So when I started out, first of all, I had a one-year-old and you know my marriage was on the rocks and I was like, okay, I have to figure out what I'm going to do and I need to just take any business I can get. You know, kind of the, the mentality that like, I just want to make this work you know, I had a little bit of imposter syndrome. So I was just taking clients that were spending five grand, 10 grand, 15 grand. I remember like the first year I had one big sale from a Harry Winston client, but the rest of it was just um, low price point um, transactions in, in my line of obviously like 15,000 is not a small transaction, but in what I do, it is. Yeah. Um, and they were challenging. They were not loyal they would shop around and I would run, I would spend hours without a commitment and they would end up not buying. So that happened intermittently the first two years of my business. And I, um, I have to give a lot of credit to a business coach named Kristen Brabant, who I met at a branding camp for women a couple years ago. And we did a few sessions and it was, she really pushed me to create a boundary of like, there's a minimum to work with me to honor and value my time, to set healthy boundaries with clients up front, to explain the process up front. She helped me kind of like prep my entire like kind of like boiler, boilerplate, like here are my conditions if you want to work with me. And if I choose to work with you, here's how it's going to go down. And when you flip the script in that way and you decide to pass and similar in dating, right? Like yes. people will give you give people an initial take a mile. So so you let people know up front, like my time is valuable. Here's, here's how I work. And if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. And so once I created, I created a minimum to working with me, which was 20,000 at the time and now is in 30,000. I may have to increase that just sh due to sheer yeah. volume. You can only take on so many clients a month when you're putting so much time and effort into creating something special for them. And once I did that and I did it, I was a little afraid. I was afraid to put my foot down and have these conversations and ask for an exclusive commitment up front because in the jewelry industry, who does that? They, everyone knows a jeweler. There are millions of jewelers out there. But, but it's an interesting thing that happens is when you honor yourself and respect yourself and believe in yourself and love yourself, everyone does too. Everything in the universe reflects back to you who you are. And so that has been a journey for me. Once I honored and loved and respected myself at a much higher level in business and in my personal life, magic happened. You know, now I, I attract only like 50,000 and up clients. I mean, I'll help clients that are spending 30,000 or whatnot, but, and I stayed so um, committed to my vision because I'm a single mom. I only have so much time yeah. in the day and I want to have balance and I want to have time with my daughter. And so I've, st I stayed true to my commitment a few high price point, you know, rings a month where I can give them the very best and bring the very best and they respect me and they love working with me. Like I meditated on this stuff for years and now I'm living it, yeah. I'm living it. It's so powerful. Um, so it works. So, so saying no is so good. And when you say no, people respect you. Now, 
Yeah. And you have to be able to bring it, right? Like, so you, you don't say no to say no, like say no right. for the right reasons, but yeah, know your yeah. worth. Yeah. It's also, you know, there's a thing to, uh, God, everything you said is so powerful. I just want, I just want you, you all just rewind it and listen to it again. I think it's also so true though. Um, when we sort of set our, our firm boundaries, especially when we're talking about price point boundaries, right? Like, like the minimum to work with me is this much, you know, we all, I think we all, we always have that fear, like you said, of like, well, what if no one goes for it? Or like, what if, you know, all those things, imposter syndrome, all the, all the feelings. But the, the thing that we always forget is that like, say someone listening is like really aspirationally wanting, um, what, like a Louis Vuitton purse, right? So like a $3,000 purse. Well, if that purse yeah. suddenly went on sale for $150, they probably wouldn't want it that much anymore. Like there True. is some, there's something Very to be true. said for like, this thing is an, this is a, a price point that even if someone can't meet it is still aspirational. There might be people out in the world. I'm sure there are Michelle who want to work with you in the future when they meet the right person who can afford your minimum. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It does create an air of specialness. Everybody wants to be unique and special. And, you know, look, our egos want to know we have yes. arrived and that we can achieve these great levels of, of exclusivity in life. We just do. We want to we want to go to the club we can't get into. We want to, you know, dine at the restaurant that only seats 10 people. We all want what we can't have. So it's <laughs> yes. in our nature just to be driven toward when someone says no, we want it that yeah. much more. When something is like really difficult to obtain, you know, that which comes easy is not that valuable. So you know, in, in, again, in dating, in life, in all the things business. So, um, I just can't reiterate enough, like knowing your value and knowing your worth and, and holding the bar there and setting a healthy boundary. It really, yeah, it's powerful and it works and you have to bring it, you have to deliver what you're, what you're setting the bar at. And when you do, <clears throat> it's a really cool thing. And yeah, like I said, it's like, I call it magic. Like magic has happened. I'm, I'm literally experiencing it. Like what's happened over the past couple of years, it's literally felt magical. Yeah. Um, and it's really, I believe everything is energy. Yeah. So doing more work on yourself and knowing your self-worth. Mm. And I, I swear, like I've, the more time I put into, into that, and that's been a journey for me, right? Like going through yeah. a divorce and just kind of like running a business, you go through all of these um, limiting self-beliefs. And so once you overcome those and grow into your highest self, you will literally like climb in abundance in all of the ways that you want to. Yes, Michelle, you're speaking my language. I'm so woo into all that because 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 <laughs> like you, I've seen it play out in my life in big and small ways. I mean, just anecdotally, like uh, this is such a minor thing really in comparison to the rest of my career. But one of the things um, right at the beginning of 2020, pre-pandemic, I was being interviewed somewhere. I think it was someone else's podcast. And they said, like, if you could do anything other than what you're doing, what would you be doing? And I said, oh, I would be a like a public speaker. If I could get paid just to travel around and speak at places, like I would, that's what I would do. And I sort of said it off the cuff. Like I wasn't, right. I, I had no plans to do that, right? Like I, I had sort of, I have, you know, someone who helps me book public speaking gigs, but then the pandemic hit and that seemed, you know, a moot point. Can I tell you that now that I, I'm sitting here in Nebraska, but this is my third public speaking gig this month. Oh my God. Like we, we have, yeah. You yes. put it out there. Think, uh, on one hand, I feel like we have to be careful what we put enter, what we put out in the universe because we'll probably get it. Right. But I don't want to say it in that negative way. I want to say like it's really true. set intentions for yourself. Like something that I sort of said off the cuff came true and it's powerful and it's wild and it's great. It's great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I want to actually comment on that because this happened to me um, I'd say like a year and a half ago, the New York Times did a write up about me, and I, I had I had meditated on it because I was like, I just want abundance. I want to get out there. I want my name out there. Um, I want to be a household name. So I was meditating, meditating, meditating. I got the New York Times. That was cool. Well, all of a sudden, I had all these reality show oh. offers. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, a reality show! Like, right. yes, right? Like, this is going to be a game changer for my business. This, that, and the other. But I had, you know, I have a very, um, I have notebooks of all of my goals, but like a very clear list. And one of the things I value the most is yeah. balance, work-life balance. And so I felt this great resistance as I'm, I'm, you know, meeting with these producers, I'm meeting with lawyers and about to sign on the dotted line. And I, I just felt in my gut that it wasn't the right thing to do again, like as a single mom running a business that I truly love this creating a whole 
reality show would throw my life out of balance. And so I prayed for some signs. I totally got the signs to pause and wait. And so I passed on the reality show, which is kind of like crazy if you think about it, but I'm so happy I did because a few months later, and I kept meditating on my intention of like, just a few high end clients a month. Rolls Royce reached out to me on Insta- uh, on a wow. LinkedIn, and I now have a partner, with, yeah, a partnership with them that is you know in process and is going to happen in October. And that I I could have never in my mind thought that that would have happened. I just had the held the intention and believed in it, and it came and it happened. But because I was more intentional about that, because the reality show was also part of my intention of like abundance, but it that that would have taken me out of alignment. So also like just because you get an opportunity doesn't mean it's right for you. You have to know like 10 years down the road, 5 years down the road, where will this lead me? Is this really going to make me happy? Like money doesn't always equate to happiness. Yes, it equates to freedom and yes, like you can make money doing other things, but I just, you know, I also put that out there because I know that it would have taken me down a road I don't want to be in. It's so wise. Know? It's so 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 wise. Um Oh, wow. There's so much there. I, I want to talk before I, I don't want to, cause I could talk to you for like hours. Right. But I want to make sure we talk about uh, <laughs> dopamine driven sales, right? Dopamine driven desire, because I've experienced this as a buyer. I think everyone probably has. Can you tell us what it is and why it's important for us to know about? Yes. Yes, absolutely. We are all as humans looking for that next dopamine hit. We are I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm always hitting that, looking for that hit of sugar, chocolate, glass of wine, and it's it's like a dopamine endorphin hit, yeah. right? The reason we aspire to buy nice things, it's a dopamine hit. Um, the reason we want to be in a relationship and and be you know in amazing places, it's the dopamine hit. So it's it's kind of the why behind why anyone does anything, why anyone buys anything, why anyone aspires to anything. It's, it's, they're feeding the brain. We're all a slave to our brain and that dopamine hit. And so when you break down your business and your, um, the way you operate with your clients, you have to keep that at the forefront because sometimes, you know, I'm sure it's like a wedding planner. You're thinking logistics, 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 but, and, and, and the end result is this incredible experience, which is that dopamine right. hit. But when you're initially interacting with your client, that also has to be a really beautiful, connected experience with them, right? Like for me, I do a lot of business um, out of state. So I can't meet these people in person. I sell six figure rings literally yeah. virtually, but I'm able to do that because I create a high level presentation and experience. And, you know, even if you're, if your business is online, you want to think about all of the feels. You want to think about the smell, the sound, the touch, you know, like when you, when I send out a package, I spray it with really good smelling perfume. Um, the, the, the texture and the branding of my packaging is the best. It's a beautiful suede along with like a really high end silk, the fabrics of what people are sitting on when they come into your office, the, you know, instead of doing a a zoom presentation, you can utilize a incredible presentation called Prezi, which allows you to have more branding colors. And it's almost like an experience online, but you want to think about, you know, of course, like when I, when I do have in-person appointments in my office in the Palisades or Beverly Hills, I bring in the most delicious Mm -hmm. cookies. I bring in the best Mm -hmm. champagne and I play the most bougie (laughs) music. So I'm creating that feeling that people want to feel when they're buying their freaking dream ring. You know, it's about creating the experience at every single touch point. And what I will say, the most important thing when you have contact with a client is you always open and close with personal. You mix business in the middle, but they have to like you before they do business 100%. with you. So you will, you always need to come at it from a personal, like, like always ask open-ended questions, like, tell me about like, what got you here? Like, how did you meet your person? Like, what's such a special thing to meet your soulmate? Like, tell me your story. I always open with yeah. that. You know, I get them in their yeah. heart and out of their brain. I love that. So, because that's really where, where we want to be. It's interesting that you say that to start with and with personal, because I think that's so important in the sales process. But then also I'm realizing as you say it, that I actually do that with my clients in every single one of our, now they've been Zoom meetings where it's like, we start with like, how are you guys? How are you doing? How's your family? And then we always end with personal. And honestly, it's 
it's such a muscle now that it's just become reflexive. Like that's just how I run the calls. So that's yeah, so I mean, it's just an interesting tidbit for anyone listening who doesn't do it that way. Sometimes, you know, when you do something in your business so often, so reflexively, you think it's like, well, everyone does it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, we do it with our friends and we think when we're doing business that we should act a certain way and we should do things differently. But actually, I'm friends with all of my clients. I treat them like friends. I yeah, treat them like me family. Too. So you should literally take off the business hat. That's That whole business thing is bullshit. The corporate that you have to act a certain way. You be genuinely and authentically yourself and care about people, care about their highest good, deliver your very best for them and and open with how you can best serve them and you will, you'll kill it. Hands down, you'll kill it. I love it. I love it. Ugh, Michelle, I could talk to you all day. It's not fair that we only have 30 minutes. <laughs> Michelle, where can the fine folks find you on the uh, internet? Oh, yeah. So um, for for my engagement rings, that would be MissDiamondRing.com, M-I-S-S, MissDiamondRing.com. And then I have a really cool collection of, it's actually great wedding jewelry or just everyday fine jewelry. They're intention diamonds. And that would be at diamondswithsoul.com. I love diamonds with soul. Yeah, I love the intention really diamonds. Tiny. That's I'm like, husband, are you listening? Get me an intention diamond. Or you know what? I'm going to buy it for myself. Yeah. Because girl boss. Hell, Hell yeah. Yes. I'm diamonds myself. Yeah, because, absolutely. And you set an intention on it and it'll be a visual reminder of whatever that intention is, whether it's manifesting, you know, good health or uh, growing your family, a new level in your career. Diamonds are crystals and they amplify energy. So it's, it's powerful. Oh, get stuff. yourself some more diamonds, peeps. Michelle, thank you so much for your time today. This has been fantastic. We are going to link to everything, Michelle, in the show notes um, and also to Prezi, the presentation software she mentioned. So don't worry. If you didn't take notes, just go to the show page and, uh, and click around. Michelle, thanks again. You're a delight. Thanks, Renee. You oh, are thanks. too. Enjoy uh, Nebraska. Well, uh, <laughs> just a few more hours for me in Nebraska and then our love affair will be over and I'll be back home to Los Angeles next week. But for everyone <laughs> listening, thank you for spending your time with us this week and we will see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for listening to Talk with Renee Dallow. Dive into the show notes at reneedallow.com forward slash podcast and connect with Renee at Talk with Renee Dallow on Instagram.